All right, so I'm really pleased to be joined with Kim and Keith from Truex Collins out of Burlington, Vermont. We spent the last day or so looking at a variety of different projects, including the motel project, some lots. We have an innovative concept on how we're going to create some lodging here in the slick of uh, waves in Salvo, North Carolina. We spent the last day on the motel filled with opportunity from a rental and demand perspective. I don't think there's any question that that would be really successful. I think we have a lot of questions about liability and longevity and cost and so on. But in your own words, um, what did you see? What did you think? Why do we think that that deal um, exists or doesn't? Well, it's interesting. We came here for that, right? We came here exactly. thinking you're going to renovate a structure and get it up and running and then walk away realizing the numbers, you just can't make the numbers work without really raising it, creating the parking, or acquiring the adjacent lot right. to provide the parking. But what I was left with was what a great opportunity to provide employee housing and to right. provide um, lodging for those who live and work here. And you know, just by the proof of your coach being two doors down, it seems like if you could make that work and that model work, and that's part of the big plan, because Which it is, right? right? I've already started a search yeah. for lots that don't have sound front or ocean front sure. that would accommodate workforce employee housing because I think yeah. the biggest issue that I face as I start to think about developing this area is mm -hmm. the infrastructure. There's not enough right. housing for people it. Yeah, that people are going to serve the cup of coffee or pour sure. a, a beer or clean houses, right? If we put mm -hmm. 100 rooms together, we need help managing all that. And where do they live right, right. now? There's nowhere. I mean, the irony of all this is, as you guys saw yesterday, I started looking at a home for myself. I'm buying all these lots and I'm developing all this area. And then and I turned around and said, where am I living? And there's just nothing. Rather so than like renting a hot, pretty high price per night rate I can't at a that. different property. But the other right. piece of it that I thought, Not was, sustainable. I thought was interesting too is to hear, okay, so the people who are working here, they may only be here seven months and then you still have an Airbnb potential for that off season or... Well, the way that they, they do it right now is they rent um, for year round because you, I don't know if you heard Eric. Rent. Well, Eric said he pays he for time to. he isn't here. He has to. He has Holding to. The place. So could you, in, you know, create potentially a create a hybrid where yeah. it's a little bit of both? Yeah. So I think that the, um, the issue with the motel, as we had a great meeting and unfortunately we weren't able to film it yesterday, but we had yeah. two civil engineers. Um, the head of zoning and planning, and Donna, the two Donna of us, uh, my lawyer, Charles. I mean, there was like eight or nine of us in a room, and we were just talking about this, and that was fantastic. We learned a lot. That's right, Richard. I think it's incredibly important to have that local team, you know, on every project for the success of just lessons learned. Exactly. You've got to have that team, yeah, boots on the ground, have that initial meeting. It's, you know, it's a pre-application meeting, so it's prior to being anything official with the town and regulatory agencies, and it really flushes out any issues. Well, you heard what Joe was saying. He was sitting, he was working with another person yeah. that had a deal not dissimilar, another motel somewhere else, right. and they bought it, right. and then they had the meeting, and then they learned about all the costs. Yeah, think so, about what you could have spent and the time, time in dollars, if you hadn't gotten that group. I mean, that was just, I thought, a brilliant meeting, and we came away with so much knowledge in a very short period of time. Um, and it's a part of the pro it's part of the design process. On every design that we kind of go through, be it residential or commercial, having those initial meetings right. with the town. The sooner you have them, the sooner you flush those out. You know, you, you're not wasting your time and team's time in moving on and making those critical decisions early. And now you know who you're dealing with. Now you know Donna. Now right. you have a relationship and, with her. And she was pretty, she both. Yeah. <laughs> she was pretty yeah. uh, thrilled with the concept of yeah. what we're doing and gave us some really good ideas. And so um, because we weren't able to film it, I just want to capture on, on film for the people sure. some of the key sure. findings. So we could renovate the motel mm -hmm. um, up to 50% of the appraised value or the purchase cost, uh, which in our particular case, because I'm buying these at pretty much distressed prices, sure. doesn't give us a lot of room. So the right. good news is I'm not buying it for a lot. The bad news is I can only spend 50% before I have to bring yeah. everything up to code. And we just couldn't do it for 50%. Not to get it safe, not to get exactly. it um, to where you could sleep at night, not worrying about what's behind the walls and what could happen. We could get it looking great. Right. But No, we could totally get it looking yeah. great. And I'm sure there's a ton of demand. Like no matter what we did, I think that would rent. But the issue became 50% just didn't, 
allow us to do enough for safety perspective right. and so then to spend over 50 percent and then bring everything up to code quickly we found that we were going to be spending millions of dollars for a small interior lot not on the water not on the ocean not good for kiters and that same allocation those millions of dollars would be better spent sure. on a different lot That's right, right? so exactly and brand new construction with no issues with you know potential flooding or no um, insulation or rotting missing stuff oh, so. it was all infrastructure based i mean you're spending probably 90 percent of your your value of that three thousand two hundred thousand on right. infrastructure updates so right. it really yeah. leaves you a small window left over to, and to a lot do of the cosmetics well that's where kim comes in and does the work herself right, right. <laughs> and Joanne, Joanne joins me and she's actually making the headboards and painting right. the walls so um unless you guys have anything else to say i'm just going to conclude Yo, go for it. I, I one thing I would say is I just I have a feeling that that might come back around, right? That's but with think. a different purpose. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think. Um, from my perspective, there is no such thing as a dead deal. Deals change, yeah. times change, valuations change. If the price comes down, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I think about it differently. Um, yeah. As I start to build these things out and I have immediate need for employee housing, mm -hmm. I think about it differently. I now yeah. have a relationship with the seller. So, you know, I'm going to be very professional and courteous and respectful as I exit. I'm not going to tell them, hey, screw you. I don't like this. Like, right. nope, don't burn any don't bridges. You never know what's going to happen. Um, this is a small island and I want good relationships and to sure. people to think highly of me and want to do work with me, right? That only benefits me. And, and within the last 12 hours, 24 hours, the networking opportunities that happen right. just in those few conversations, right. I think it's, it's ultimately can move it forward to other projects and really benefit. Well, that's the point, right? I'm building a team of people because I've got a 10 year project here. And so I would like to pick the best people that want to work with me that are attracted to the project. And then we just learn and make it better, learn and make it better. And I think that the, um, the point that I wanted to make is, you know, it's a small island and you have everyone to, yeah, everyone. you have to really behave and, mm -hmm. and be long forward thinking. And that was one of the things that we stressed with Donna in the meeting was, I'm not looking to come in here and optimize only for the dollars. Sure. I want to preserve the wetlands and I want to make it cool and nice and add value besides just line Lasting my pockets. Value. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like best use and lasting value in a long-term perspective. And I think that there's very few people that have come in to this area and invested any money. And the people that have come and invested money are probably only looking at the return on investment. And so this is sort of an interesting perspective. And when she heard that, I think she opened up and gave us some really good ideas, which we're not gonna really share at this time, but it sort of validated a lot of the things that we've been talking about and speculating about and everyone sort of thought was kind of crazy and didn't make a lot of sense. And then yeah. it was like, here's a good way to go. And we were all like, boom, interesting. Um, so anyway, I appreciate uh, your time coming down here and, and your thoughts on the motel. It's been really Absolutely. helpful. This I is think, fascinating. I think it may come back uh, to your point and um, you just never know how it's all gonna work out until you do it. And for the people that are watching and, and learning through this, and I hope it's interesting, you know, I had to make a decision about how much I invest up front sure. versus later. And so having everybody in that room together and down here is a investment. And you may look at it and say, gee, it didn't work out. So it was a waste of money. And it's the exact opposite, right? It yeah, saved me. Saved it saved me hundreds of thousands, maybe Absolutely. even millions of dollars, right. right? Like Joe said in the other meeting, they bought the place and yeah. then they found out. And now all of a sudden we'd be in an interior small lot that doesn't really work, upgrading to current standards when we sure. could have used that money for new construction. So just think long term about that. And the relationships you're building. I mean, you're, you're, you're working your way into a new community, new to you, and you know, you're learning who all the players are, who are the best builders, who are the best engineers, who is your team, that in itself, building those relationships and trusts. Exactly. And then I think it's a matter of timing and alignment and um, I don't know, I think it's, it's, I've been fascinated. I really enjoyed this process. <laughs> I'm not always as interior designer, you know, as fortunate to be involved in being in this, the commissioner's meeting, you know, our office talking about land use and permitting. And, you know, I'm often brought in after all that's determined and figured out. So it's really fascinating for me to be sitting next to a civil engineer in a meeting and understanding how all of this is determined. I really enjoy it. I mean, this is a, a due diligence period. As, as we call it in the design right. phase, right? 
And so the value that it brings, it can either put projects on the fast track forward yep. or you have to make that hard decision and, and, and say, okay, we're moving on. Exactly. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a value add potentially to the project. Um, so it's, it's unnecessary. It, um, and, it, and it's been really great. And I think just to, to conclude, one of the things that you said, Kim, was um, that it was really fascinating for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really fascinating for me too. Sure. I've never done this. I've built many homes for yeah. personal use and I've sat in on meetings and I've done zoning and I think you listened to me talking about the construction and the EPA and you know I know mm -hmm. a fair amount of what's going on but not at the size, not at the scale, not sure. with investor capital and so like it's new to me too and the message I would just leave to anybody watching this is it's not unique to me like people can do this. Go outside your comfort zone. Think right. bigger. Assemble a team. Pay a little bit of money and get some experts together in a room and and flush it out. And if it doesn't work today, mm -hmm. that's really knowledge, great knowledge for a year from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, right? So look at all the material to knowledge too that we glean today, just visiting those properties, listening exactly. to the yeah. builders. Understand, what materials, your context. Right? Understand context, your context. What materials are proven and tried and true and, you know, taking photographs of everything we saw as we went, you have that to apply to wherever you land on. Cool. An investment here. I think it's awesome. Listen to the locals. Right. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. You know, bring in the experts from Vermont, but listen to the locals. <laughs> right. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Keith, Richard. Thank you. Awesome. Kim, thank Great. you. Thank you. All right, friends. So in conclusion about the motel, I like the location. I like the density, the 16 units at the motel. I like the price. I liked everything about it. But what we learned when we sat down with the county commissioner and the planning and zoning office was the 50% rule kicked in which again meant that we could only renovate the property up to 50% of the cost or the appraisal before we would be considered a new construction. And when you do new construction, uh, basically everything has to be to code. So while I want everything to be to code, I wanted to keep everything below 50%. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to raise the, the property, I'd have to do insulation, I'd have to do new electric, I'd have to do new parking, I'd have to do everything. And then when you do all of that, what I found was that we would quickly be in a price point that was unattractive for the location. I didn't want a multi-million dollar project on an interior lot, not on the sound, not on the ocean, uh, and a small lot. For that same amount of money, there's far better investment opportunities, and that's ultimately what we decided to do. But the line of questioning, the process we went through, uh, the experts that we hired, the meetings that we had, and so on, that's the due diligence phase, and I think we did great due diligence, and while we would have loved to purchase the property, it was really spectacular from a cash flow perspective. The right decision here was to walk away, and my investors are happy that I'm making these tough calls, because at the end of the day, they're investing in this guy and the development project, not just the cash flow. So managing that process is critical. I hope you found this video helpful. You know the drill. Like it and subscribe to the channel.